You want people to look at you and know that you're chomping at the bit, aching to get out on the football field, and you're appalled at the fact that you haven't been franchise tagged. I'm not saying he doesn't feel that way, but when you party in the South Beach during the season and it's right after the immediate aftermath of your team that you represent, your team losing football games, a team that you inevitably have to go back to this season in order to be eligible for free agency in 2019, it's just not a good look. And then the last point that I'd like to make is this. Now, this is just me, okay, because we all we understand that unlike college football, NFL, the NFL has taken strides in hiring African-American coaches. I am telling you, as a reporter for 25 years, what I have religiously been told and what I have witnessed personally. When you talk about African-American coaches getting hired, with the exception of Marvin Lewis, who should have been fired years ago, okay? Know Marvin Lewis. Usually, usually 15 years without a playoff victory, Marvin Lewis, usually what happens is, is that you had ownership, at least in the past, talking about an African-American coach being hired because of the relationship with players, the way they can ingratiate themselves with players, et cetera, et cetera. Yes, you do have to win. But you also are held to a higher standard to some degree to exercise, quote unquote, institutional control. And I'm seeing all of these players and acting up. I'm talking about on the Steelers specifically, only on the Steelers. All of them who happen to be black. And this man, Mike all Tomlin, too. I said on, I said on Pittsburgh, yeah, too. I'm talking about you got the offensive line talking about Le'Veon Bell. You okay. got Antonio right. Brown. Okay. You, got, you, got, you got James. I, I mentioned a few players. What I'm saying is, even though he doesn't deserve it and it's going to be OK because he wins football games. The bottom line is that puts Mike Tomlin in a very precarious position, and it offends me that these players don't appear to have a heightened level of sensitivity to the man that they're answering to in that regard. I wish they would do better and think about somebody other than themselves. There is dysfunction in Pittsburgh, and reason, Max, the reason that you're wrong is everything that we're hearing from Pittsburgh, whether it's whatever clip we show, when we hear from Mike Tomlin, there is nothing about football. Everything is about social media, a back that's not, that hasn't reported. There's nothing, nothing being talked about as far as the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who, by the way, are 2-0. Nothing really being said about the fact that their defense is atrocious. Everything has been outside of football. And a big part of that and a big part of the blame goes to Mike Tomlin because when you're the head coach, you set the standard. You set the message, mm -hmm. okay? Last week, week one, you hear all this talk from players talking about Le'Veon Bell. Well, the Steelers knew, Mike Tomlin knew that Le'Veon Bell probably wasn't going to report, okay? So the message always runs downhill. It starts at the top. It should have been known to the players. We're not going to address or we're yeah. not going to talk about guys who are not here. That's the one. And have the okay. same message. Have the same That's message. That's a good hold point. On, wait, That's hold a good point. And, but and I don't think they knew he was going to report. Wait, hold on. And, because when I put the one thing I'll say, when I played for the Patriots and Bill, every player, the message kept getting regurgitated time and time again from the players. And you know where it came? It came from one person, and that was Coach Belichick. Yeah. Okay? You see this stuff with Antonio Brown. The fact that Mike Tomlin couldn't clarify that it was excused or excuse, it wasn't an excuse. It wasn't an excuse because if, if it was an excuse, he would have said, said it. Okay? So you have all these things going on. Mm -hmm. So it leads me to question Mike Tomlin in the sense of, okay, where's the leadership? Yeah. Where's the leadership from the head coach to set the standard, to set the message, to get these guys focused on what's really important and that's the next opponent. What that's would you the do? only okay, thing wait, that's Damien, important right now. Two, two things. When you're saying, oh, I understand the point, hey, the offensive line is talking, too. And I think that's a fair point to make. But what do you do? But you say, like, they knew Le'Veon Bell wasn't going to report. I thought he might not report. I kept being told, no, 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 hey, and the players keep hearing he's going to be there before the season started. I think they were a little bit caught off guard by, like, by that. You hear a lot of people say they're not going to, but how many running backs on a team that have good Super Bowl odds at, at 26 actually don't report to – so I think they were taken off guard. About Antonio Brown, what do you do if you're Mike Tomlin? 
as you're giving a speech last year, careful on social media, the man is putting it on Facebook Live. You have live. to drill it into their heads. You the, have to, there's the, the punishment point. if you don't follow Okay, code. okay. They, so you want to punish Antonio Brown? You need, Good well, luck you, with that. What are you going to do? He's the best receiver in the league in his prime. Yes. What are you going to do? I need to go back to what Stephen A. said, though. Because, Stephen A., you categorized Le'Veon Bell as selfish, and your tune completely changed. Because initially, I remember watching you on Get Up, and you were saying you were in support of him, him getting his money, and you were disappointed in the team turning on him. And now I feel like your tune has changed. Is that based on seeing him out there in Miami. And well, my tune so has not, my, my tune has not changed in terms of him deserving his money. Mm -hmm. My tune has changed in terms of me being sympathetic to him because you don't go out, you don't get seen partying, chilling in South Beach or wherever the hell you were on the, in the immediate aftermath of your team losing a game without you. I understand that management should have taken mm -hmm. care of you in terms of the GM and mm -hmm. ownership. But that's not the coach, and that's not your teammates. And when you do something like that, you're not wrong because you're not under contract per se, but it sends the wrong message. And I think that's incredible. No, he's, hold on, hold on. You know what? Not only does it send the wrong message to the Steelers, but when he inevitably, teams. when Talk he hits teams. free agency, other teams are going to be like, you're out here partying. Yeah. Where is your, what, what are your priorities? Why should we invest a ton of money and, in you? No, oh, I disagree with everybody here. Well, Invest a ton of money in him. The whole point is these guys haven't really. They're paying me year by year a lot of money on the franchise tag. His whole point is you want me to show up and play? Hey, I'm in Miami chilling right now. Le'Veon Bell is so great. He gives you an enormous premium in yards after catch. Yeah, in, Max. In but ball you know, security. But you know in, what, Max? In, but, but all of that In the said, passing game. But you in, know what? in the blocking. My point is he is sending the precise message you guys are mad at. On purpose. He's saying, guys, I'm good. You need me. Pay me. That's I, what he's listen, saying. I understand, so the, whole pay, I understand the whole payment thing. But at the end, of the, when he get, becomes a free agent, guess what? All those other um, free, uh, front offices, they're going to look at their, his situation and be like, is this guy really all in? Can we? If you pay him, why would you think he we wouldn't have, be? 